Hey everybody, what's up? And welcome back to the channel with more birth right here as we get to the last of the political realms for the Brecht region. And that's a weird one today because it's actually the Zweiland Islands, so it's not part of the mainland, uh, as you can probably tell by its name. So it's just a collection of a couple little island provinces, and it's an interesting one too. Another one that's not available for PCs, it's chaotic, chaotic neutral, um, again, not for PCs. So uh, it's really a mysterious realm and has a lot of different things going on. We saw the ruler's name already in one of the other entries. But let's take a look here. So we have four provinces. Three of them are pretty high, right? You got three level sixes, so and then a level two. Um, law is kind of divided a little bit. We'll get into that. And then you got the temple and guild action, which is pretty straightforward, though the guilds um, are uh, mixed in with the sources so um, this is one of those realms where the ruler has kind of their pies in different uh, areas um, or the fingers in different pies uh, c controlling different things so because colin shafepate who's a level eight wizard uh, is of elven heritage he can develop source holdings to their max level seven regardless of the levels of the provinces uh, unfortunately holdings on the islands belong to um, uh, non-elf regions restrict his maximum uh, source holdings the maximum rating of his sources are equal to the magic potential of the province minus the single largest interfering holding. Thus, on Zweiland, Shafepate cannot raise a source above a four. Um, so again, even though it doesn't list the other sources there, so it's a little something to get into. But anyway, the law, he does not he does his best to control the law on the Zweilands, but his chaotic and inverted nature keeps him out of touch with his people. As a result, two followers of Kirche have actually moved in. One is Hubrick Raceland, a level seven priest, and actually chaotic good, charismatic leader trying to take, or sorry, tack the pirates of the Zweilands away from their ill wind. Now on the priest side, temple side, Talis Shecklin um, is Kirche's priest on the islands and the leader of the small red sword striking temple. Few of his subjects, Colin's subjects, that is, subscribe to Kirche's teachings, mainly because the god is chaotic and relishes battle and conflict. Talos has been urging the pirates to follow Hubrick's lead and turn their skills towards good. On the guilds, the island mage controls the only guild holdings on the island, which are merely basically just warehouses and distribution centers for the pirates' plunder. However, occasionally he does set up a trade route with one of the other guilds of the Great Bay, but in invariably forgets about it during one of his long study periods. Still, the guild does remarkably well. Pirates of the Twilands make a healthy profit from their adventures. And then on the sources, as we've kind of hinted at, Despite the interference from the Red Sword Holdings and Kalyan of Gravismu, uh, Colin does control nearly all the magical energy available on the islands, and he has ley lines going to the mainland as well. The barren rocky islands are suffused with magical energy, and he knows how to exploit it. Of course, could exploit more if he'd get rid of the interference. So something that the DM could again work into campaign arcs as far as um, what's going on with these islands and how they might interact and interfere with maybe adventurers in other realms or other people ruling other realms. Now, for the DM here, Regency, a fair bit uh, generated. 49 is nothing to uh, sneeze at, and 12 accumulated. And a decent little treasury of 19 gold bars. Again, not huge by some of the other Brecht um, uh, uh, domains, but you know, if you compare it to an Anawirian domain, that's still on the high side. Um, but plenty of, plenty of resources there. No one knows how many army units the Island Mage controls. It is well known that he can summon undead creatures to do his bidding, seemingly at will. Again, Realm Magic. The following is a guess at his real troops, though, and it's probably a little shy. So again, feel free for the DM to adjust a little bit, but pretty solid um, uh, amount of stuff here. And as you can kind of guess, no calories. But four units of infantry, four units of island marines, two artillerists, makes sense, and then two units of mercenary reavers. Navy is a little small, um, all things considered, but probably could um, have uh, another one or two things here. But two round ships and a keel boat, um, which, again, th only three ships here doesn't really seem like much for... Um, those you know engaging in piracy so again something to play up for the dm maybe uh doubling it would again you have to adjust that with other realms too but maybe you know adding at least one or two more ships um would be realistic one of colin's round ships the black lion definitely has magical enhancements he probably has more hidden in his bay caverns as well now the region himself since colin shafepate is the primary regent of the zvilans all citizens look to him for a direction Unfortunately, he's not always there. Recently, while the island mage was engaged in arcane experiments, Hubrick and Talus moved in. Colin has not attempted to oust them from their toehold on the Zweilands as of yet, but again, could be some conflict. The island mage's lieutenants uh, are truly talented. They must manage the realm when their lord is otherwise occupied, so they have to deal with his chaotic, often surly manner. And above all, they must know when to brave their lord's do-not-disturb signs when he's researching spells inside of his tower. 
So First Lieutenant Black Adara, um, level 9 fighter, so nothing to sneeze at there, lawful evil, is an ebon-skinned beautiful pirate from the Sea of the Golden Sun. Did not get her name because of her skin, however. Her cruelty to her foes is legendary amongst the kingdoms of the Black Ice Bay. Rumors float about the islands concerning uh, Black Adara's true relationship with her lord, but none speak of it to her face. Um, yeah, makes sense. Then we also have Garth Sukenhold, um, and level 7 thief, lawful neutral, interestingly here. Tempers Black Adara's vicious nature and keeps Colin's guilds running in his absence. Cautious and greedy, which seem to be, you know, uh, almost opposites. Um, Garth has been known to venture onto the mainland to serve his lord's interests as well as his own. He is a violent opponent of uh, Talus Shecklin. Um, he sees the Temple of Kirche as a subversive influence on the citizenry, and he thinks Hubrick is a blustering fool. So you have some internal dissent there, not necessarily between the uh, lieutenant so much, but just with some of the other uh, NPCs and stuff going on on the island as well. The island mage um, and his lieutenants are unusually good at spotting potential problems among the populace, that is, prominent people, and eliminating or recruiting them quickly. Hubrick and Talus are noteworthy because they came from the mainland. They didn't grow up in pirate families on the islands. One individual of importance, though, lives on the tiny island, island of Anzla, which is the level two province. Only a few private, uh, not, uh, uh, pirates uh, brave this treacherous cliff-faced landmass in order to see her. She is known as the Ice Goddess, again, blank slate there, and she is a priestess of the Shifting Sea. It is said that the Ice Goddess has some control over the weather in the Black Ice Bay and can commune with the Kraken and beg its mercy. Whatever the case, whether she is just an ancient hermit who knows a few unusual spells or a true cleric of an unknown deity, she knows more about its violent islands, the Black Ice Bay, and the Kraken than all the scholars on the mainland combined. So, again, fertile ground there for the DM to come up with whatever they want um, to uh, work that into a campaign. Could be friendly, could be antagonistic, who knows? Now, the description of the islands, as we've kind of already guessed, um, cold, hilly, and barren, this describes them perfectly. At no time in their history have they been uh, known to have like warm days or been free of a chill breeze. In the summertime, when the, the bay warms up and shines in the sunlight, north winds still break along the Svilin's northern coast. In the winter, when the entire Kraken hour uh, threatens to freeze solid and the black ice forms only, um, a crazy man would venture outdoors or onto the Svilin's hills. And how can anybody actually survive here? Well, um, visitors, um, as we can kind of guess already as well, are not welcome on the Svilins, but many trespassers and pirates have been captured and transported or <clears throat> retired to the mainland. They all keep their mouths shut about life on the Tylee Islands, out of fear of the island mage, no doubt, but rumors still spread. Many say that the hidden ship caverns on the Zvilans, of which there are many, lead to tunnels carved out of the dormant volcanoes that thrust the Zvilans up long centuries ago. The tales go so far as to describe great dwarven halls hewn from the rock and heated by a still active volcano, then held in check by the island mage's magic. So again, could be a lot of interesting things to do there um, description-wise for the realm and maybe even having sort of the remnants of an old dwarven, forgotten dwarven city or realm um, could be something that tries to lure adventurers there for, you know, looking for treasure. Now, some believe the pirates of the Twilands are just desperate and crazy and they flee to Graben Toad or the empty forts of Gravismu during the coldest months. Then cities. Um, so the largest of the four islands holds a great docking cavern and a small city beneath a rock, its uh, rocky shelf. Lichtstadt, uh, the lantern city, um, I literally like light city or yeah, bright city, um, never sees the light of day. So um, some irony there. Whale oil and continuing light torches illuminate the darkness, but the settlement never sleeps. Keelboats owned by individual pirates who pay tribute to the island mage sail in and out of the uh, and or under the great shelf that overhangs the harbor. They, um, they expel their stolen goods and weary crews out onto the docks at irregular intervals. At times, when the Black Lion is in port, the city truly comes alive, and the cavern dances with light and shadows, music and laughter, and shouts and screams. So, quite the environment. Now, allies, they really have no true allies, um, though they are friendly with the mountain kingdoms along the western coast of the Kraken Aricht. The pirate sails, uh, the pirates sail across the Great Bay and sell their, um, sell the miners of the mountains luxuries they would not otherwise see. Now, occasionally they come back with miners or uh, the children of miners as apprentices to a new, more worldly craft. So, in other words, slave drivers or forced indenture. Um, anyway, the enemies, though, several of those. Colin Shafepate has forbidden assaults on royal vessels. So, as a result, Mudin's galleons and Danigau's silver fleet are immune to the pirates' predations. 
and those uh, two powerful realms ignore the Zvilin pirates' other activities. Colin is careful not to prey too heavily on the shipments out of the Dwarven settlements uh, in Gravesmill or the dried meats and lumbering coming from Bearhagen, so he does uh, not make enemies of uh, there either. Now, if the island mage uh, has any true enemies, they are Kellyanne Llewellyn, uh, a rival mage from Gravesmill, um, and the pirates of Graben Toad, um, whom Black Adara sees as competitors in her uh, and her rightful prey. So he got some uh, competition between the bad guys there, essentially. So and that could be an interesting um, plot point in campaign to sort of a, a outright um, conflict between sort of two pirate nations, sort of being st stuck in the middle of that. Then finally, special considerations. The Lord of the Zvilans plays the distracted ruler to the hilt. He disappears for months at a time, emerging from his tower on Zvilans, only to snarl at his lieutenants and eat a little food. However, when Lord Shafepate returns to his attention, returns his attention to a project like the destruction of an enemy, he plows ahead full steam until the goal is realized. So, yeah, you have that uh, to, to work on as well. Uh, something to bring into a campaign uh, could mess with the players too. You know, maybe they're the focus of him wanting to. Um, attack a realm that the players are in or even you know hunting the players themselves and then maybe he just goes silent for a number of months and throws the the adventurers off maybe they get stuck in side quests and other things or just sent on wild goose chases so it could be something interesting there and maybe you know then switching out for oh the the different lieutenants are uh, after them and other things like that so it could be really neat to really discover um, all these sort of true things going on on this violence because the the characters should definitely be kept kept in the dark for a long bit unless they're actually on the islands or even in the employ, but even then should still be a lot of mystery and um, things that can be done there just to, to mess with the players. Um, so an interesting realm, nonetheless, again, not one for players, but something that really could be a fun little mysterious realm that the, the, the players gradually learn about, or maybe they somehow end up shipwrecked on the island. All kinds of fun areas that we could use to incorporate that. Um, so let us know, guys, um, if you have run as a DM uh, and kind of incorporated the Zvilent Islands into your campaigns and players if you've adventured there and how that's gone and what that was like. So be sure to hit us up in the comments, like and subscribe, and we'll have more for you soon. Uh -huh.